welcome back. In our last video, we introduced you to our Ram ProMaster van that we're going to convert into a camper. And we took you on a journey to get our hemp insulation. And this week, we're going to get you caught up on some of the stuff that we've already done to the van and our future plans for it. First things first, we need to have some breakfast and we need to walk the dogs before it gets too hot. out here this morning it's actually um, warming up we got a pretty late start this morning I've been really tired helped Austin with his motor home yesterday and did some running yesterday morning and did some exercising yesterday evening and I'm just wiped out so I kind of hung out in bed this morning and it took us a while to get the breakfast made get the dogs fed get the dishes cleaned up and but now we're enjoying our morning walk. This is my Tacoma. And when I met Christina and I on four and a half years ago, um, I had set this up and was planning on doing basically a, a one to two year walkabout uh, in my truck. I was gonna live out of here. You can see I've got my uh, pots and pans, my propane, my propane stoves is right back here. I've got a table under there. I've got a couple of chairs, a lounge chair, and I've got all my uh, utensils and things and then pull out trays underneath there. And um, I could actually put all my clothes in there too in one of those trays the way I had it set up. When I first met Matt and we started camping in his truck, I thought it was really cush. I had grown up camping and I loved to camp and his truck and the way he had it laid out was really awesome. It, it made it um, a great experience to go camping. But then as we started talking about doing more extended traveling, um, we were beginning to realize that the truck might be a little bit more challenging. That's another reason why we got the van, something that we can cook in inside. Um, we can be in more inclement weather and still be comfortable. One of the things we found if we got caught in a rainstorm or extremely cold weather, we didn't have a lot of choices. So it might be the middle of the afternoon and we'd crawl into the back of the truck and you could really only lay down. You couldn't sit up and play cards or it was challenging to read a book and things like that. So the van is just gonna be a lot more um, comfortable for us. If you like these videos and wanna know more about our van build, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. I wanted to talk to you about the seats in the ProMaster a little bit. Um, the seats have been an ongoing subject of uh, attention, let's put it that way. Um, so initially we got the seats, they were not very comfortable, but um, you know, we're dealing with it, we're figuring it out. We mentioned that on the last video. With the space that we have in this van, we wanted to go with the 136 inch wheelbase because it's smaller. This van is actually 10 inches shorter than my Tacoma and you can back it into parallel parking places. Um, it just makes it very nice and maneuverable and, and a very usable uh, vehicle. But because of the short wheelbase, we don't have a lot of space in here. The bed takes up about half of the van. So we just don't have enough room to build a banquette or a seating area with a table. Uh, and we really wanted to be able to use these chairs. So uh, my first thought was, yeah, we definitely need to get some swivel, swivels to put on these seats. Um, which we did. Uh, you can see my driver's seat is swiveled right now and um, you just have to reach down, push the little button. You've got to move the seat forward in order to get it to swivel and clear 
here and then you can move it back. But um, we'll have a spot here where we can where we can actually eat. Uh, we'll be putting in a table here so that we can work on computers, we can eat, um, and all that kind of stuff. I really wanted to have these chairs be usable space. We put those in and they raised the seats up another uh, nearly two inches. So Christina already on the original seats couldn't reach the floor, but uh, there's a definite issue here. And uh, we've read many comments from people who <coughs> talk about these seats, who put swivels in their seats, and they already, if they're 5'10", can't see well, can't see things like traffic lights without crink crinking their neck to look down. And so there's definitely a little bit of a, of a design issue with these seats. Nevertheless, um, we did put the seats in and we're just gonna have, to, I mean, we put the swivels in. I got the swivels from Swivels R Us. They work really well. They're a little bit tight to maneuver, but very doable and it looks like they'll last a long time. If you could see my feet right now, you would see that right now they're about three inches off of, or, or about six inches off of the main floor in the van. So I'm gonna have to definitely build up a spot here, a little platform stage that is that we're gonna have to be able to use so that we can get in and out of the seats and so that we can sit here comfortably and use the table. This radio to me sounded just basically like a transistor radio. So one of the things I did is I got a new new stereo for it that's a little bit more updated. Has uh, It's easier for me to read because I have some eye issues uh, and I need lots of light. Um, so it's easier for me to see and also put in a little subwoofer here and the sound quality is way better. We're gonna, it's gonna be a nice van to ride in when it's all finished. One of the first things I wanted to do is get all the holes in the outside of the van before I could start insulating it and doing wiring and that type of thing. I needed to get everything that was gonna be put through the outside of the van done. Uh, so I did the vent up here I did put the solar panels on the roof and I have a couple of penetrations that come through for the wires for the solar panels that are going to go to the charge controller. And then I did an antenna for our Wii Boost because we need that so that we can have the Wi-Fi while we're on the road because that's very important to our businesses. And um, I also put in these windows. Uh, I've got uh, three CL Lawrence windows and um, I've heard great things about the motion uh, windows, but C.L. Lawrence windows are the only ones that actually make an awning window, and especially for our bed on the side that our head's going to be on, which is right here, um, that awning window opens up. You can actually have it open while you're driving, although it's probably not the best thing, but uh, it will allow a lot of airflow through here and up through the van. Ventilation is key in this rig. Um, it's gonna be really important for our comfort to have good ventilation. The other window that I put in was in here, and this also has an awning on it, which um, we wanted that to just get as much ventilation through here as possible. The next thing that we did in the van is we put up this uh, easy cool, uh, it's basically a foil line, foil on both sides, sandwiched. Um, it's not quite bubble wrap, but it's got a plastic bubble closed cell um, insulation in between. The main reason we put that on there is because being in the van, especially cooking uh, and just being in here breathing um, is going to bring moisture into the space. Um, the walls are going to be breathable and the moisture will be able to travel through those walls to the outside wall of the van, uh, to the inside of the outside wall of the van, which even when it's cool outside, we could get condensation on these outside walls. Um, so I wanted to prevent that from happening. In the building business, when I was building, we would either vent the space so that there was always airflow on the cold side of the insulation or you put insulation directly on 
the outside walls so that you don't get condensation on those outside walls that causes rot. That condensation will actually get into our hemp insulation and um, could cause some issues with that hemp insulation, although hemp insulation is uh, rot, mold, and mildew resistant. So we put this on with a uh, spray adhesive. I'm going to actually be doing all the metal surfaces that are going to exp be exposed to the inside of the van, which is all of these metal surfaces, before we cover them up. Um, for now, though, I just did the outside walls. Uh, for one reason, when we drove to uh, Salt Lake to pick up the hemp insulation and plywood that we got there, um, putting this on as a sound dampener, and it really made a difference. The, the rig was so much more comfortable to ride in having this on there. The other thing to consider before you actually insulate your van is uh, we needed to make sure that all the wiring that goes into the walls, just like in a normal house, um, is in place before you cover those walls. So you can see I've got wiring. Um, this is the wire that's going to the under cabinet lights. There's gonna be switches right here for the overhead lights and for the under cabinet lights. And then um, at, with a dimmer, and I'll have a monitor for the solar system here. And I've got these set up so that they're in approximately the place that the puck lights are gonna go that go in the ceiling um, before all this gets insulated. I made a mistake the other day because I didn't have um, some of the wire that I needed. Most of this is actually marine wire that I bought on Amazon that is totally doesn't smell. It's a great stuff to use. But um, I had a couple of things I needed um, to get and I went to Home Depot. They didn't have what I needed. So what I ended up getting was SO cable, which is really made for outdoor use. Um, I put that in here. I put a 25 foot length of, of 12 gauge and a, and a three foot length of 10 gauge. Boy, this whole van smells like a tire factory. It's nasty, it's disgusting. So today, one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out that SO cable um, and replace it with some good cables. I was a builder for about 15 plus years, um, had my own business, did almost all my own wiring. I worked with, a, with uh, licensed electricians who let me uh, do a lot of the wiring. Um, and did most of the plumbing myself. I'm very familiar with all the systems that are going in this van, but this is a lot more complicated. This is different because nothing is square, level, or plumb. Um, it's not using techniques I'm familiar with, but one of the things that's really critical in this situation is getting all the things in the walls that you need to get in. And I said that once before with, with the uh, wiring. One of the things I realized when I woke up this morning is that I forgot the thermostat wire for the heater. That's something else I need to make sure I integrate into the system. So whether you're building a home or building out a van, building with less toxins and building more sustainably is really a journey. In a perfect world, we could have a perfectly sustainable home with zero toxins in it. But that's not the reality that we have right now, and we have to make choices. And it's really a balance. So being clear on your values and what you're willing to compromise on and not compromise on is really important. Just for example, the easy cool that we talked about in our van wasn't our first choice for material. We had another uh, material chosen, but it had, was not shipping. It was delayed and it kept being delayed and delayed and we felt like we needed to move forward with our project. So we ended up using the easy cool product, which required us to use a spray on adhesive that came in an aerosol can. Well, that just goes against, you know, everything that I would choose to put into a van or to a home but we kind of had to make that decision to either not move forward with the project or use the spray on adhesive so we made the best of it and we made sure that we sprayed the adhesive outside it didn't seem to smell too much and I don't think it's going to off gas very much so I think it's going to be okay in the long run but it wasn't our first choice and the easy cool as a product itself is not what you would put in a um, 
and an earth-friendly home, but building in a van has certain considerations. And it would have been far less healthy to not put some sort of thermal break on those metal walls because the water would condense on there and could cause mold and rust problems, which are problems that are far worse than using the spray-on adhesive. So if you like these videos and you're enjoying the videos about our van build and would like to know more about sustainable homes and sustainable building, please subscribe to our channel. You can do that by clicking the button down below and make sure you hit the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video. That doesn't sound very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you my truck if you show me yours. <laughs>